All right, welcome aboard. Today we're gonna to be talking about electrical circuit state space representation. I'm gonna break it down Barney style right now. So let's check out our diagram here. We've got a current source. We've got one loop. We've got two loop. And we've got three loop. We've got an inductor in loop one. We've got a capacitor in loop two and we've got a resistor and an inductor in loop three. So let's go ahead and talk about which state space variables we're going to select. We've got three loops, so there will be three variables. When we're dealing with inductors, we want to choose the current across the inductor. When we're dealing with a capacitor, we want to talk about the voltage drop across the capacitor. And when we're dealing with a resistor, the hell with the resistor. Another inductor, we're gonna take the current across this inductor. So numbering them from right to left, we're gonna have inductor number one, L1, capacitor, and inductor number two, L2. Our state space variables then will be the current across inductor number two as X1, the voltage drop across the capacitor is X2, and the current across the inductor number one as X3. The input to our system is going to be this current source here. All right, first up, let's deal with loop number one, and that's going to be inductor number two. Our equation to satisfy is going to be L2 DI2 DT is equal to the voltage drop across the capacitor because coming out of this node A, we'd be going here and here. So I2 is equal to X1 and VC is equal to X2. So let's just rewrite this section again, L2 DI2 DT is equal to X2. We got rid of the VC. Now let's get rid of the I2. We'll still have the L2. Now we'll go DX1 DT is equal to X2. DX1 DT is X1 dot. And we want to make sure all of our dot variables stay on the left in the end. So we'll, we'll reduce this whole thing right here to X1 dot. And then we will divide both sides by L2. So X1 dot is equal to one over L2 times X2. And there's our first equation. Next, let's go to the capacitor. That was loop number two. And we were talking about the voltage drop across the capacitor. So the current across the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the derivative of the voltage drop. So VC was X2. So we'll say IC DVC DT is now IC equal to C DX2 DT. DX2 DT is X2 dot, and everything else will stay. IC, IC, C, and X2 dot. I see. Do you see? Okay. Now let's go ahead and rearrange so that our dot variable is on the left again. So that's going to be X2 dot is equal to IC over C. But IC isn't anything in our state space variables here, so we've got to explore that a little bit more. Let's check this out. The current source here has to be equal to this current, this current, and this current. So IA is equal to I2 plus IC plus I1. And we're interested in IC, so we'll put IC on the left and rearrange the equation so that it says IC is equal to IA minus I2 minus I1. And we'll go ahead and plug in this representation for IC into our x2 dot equation, which is going to leave us with 
x2 dot is equal to ia divided by c minus i2 divided by c minus i1 divided by c. And here is our second equation. Moving on to our third is inductor L1. That was this guy right here. And look, there's a resistor in series with him, so don't forget the resistor is in this loop too. So we're gonna say that that VC voltage drop over here has to be equal to the voltage drop across these two. So we're going to say our resistor times I1 because V equals IR, right? So there's the resistor. And then we're gonna do our inductor here. L1 is equal to DI1 DT equal to VC. VC is equal to X2, takes care of that. And I1 is equal to X3. And we've got two of those. So we'll rewrite saying Rx3 is equal to L1 dx3 dt equal to x2. It's just replacing this equation with our state space variables from up there. Now we're going to clean this up. Rx3 will stay. dx3 dt is x3 dot. That will stay with its product on L1, and it's all equal to X2, but we need to have our dot variables on the left. So we'll rearrange and say X3 dot is going to be equal to one over L1, X2, minus R over L1, X3. And that's our third equation. Then we're gonna check our output. Our output is VL here, this voltage drop. And that voltage drop has the resistor component, the inductor component, and that has to be equal to the voltage drop across the capacitor, VC. So, We'll say R I1 plus VL is equal to VC. I1 is equal to X3 and VC is equal to X2. So we can rewrite as R times X3 plus VL is equal to X2, but we wanted it in terms of the output VL. So we'll put VL on the left we rearrange that, we're gonna get X2 will stay where it is, and we'll just subtract Rx3, giving us VL equal to X2 minus Rx3. So here's our output equation. So we have our three state space variable equations, one, two, three, and our output. So let's go ahead and write the state space for this system. Remember the standard format is x dot is equal to a times x plus b times u, where u is the input, and y, which is the output, is equal to c times x plus d times u, again, where u is the same output. So x dots, we had three state space variables, so x dot 1, x dot 2, and x dot 3 is equal to our a matrix here times x. And again, x1, x2, x3. So how do we fill out this A matrix? Let's go check out equation number one, x dot one. x dot one has no x1 components, has no x3 components, and has a coefficient of one over L2 on x2. So x1 goes with 0, x2 goes with 1 over L2, and x3 gets a 0. Let's go check out x dot 2 equation, our second equation. Okay, so when we go back and check out the x2 dot equation, I'm just realizing right now that I left it in the form of IA over C, 
minus I2 over C minus I1 over C. But I2 is equal to X1 and I1 is equal to X3. So the true final form of it would be IA over C minus X1 over C minus X3 over C. So when we come back to our state space in our second row of our X2 dot, that's here, we're gonna be looking at X1 here, which is multiplied by one over C, negative one over C rather. There is no X2 and X3 is also multiplied by negative one over C. All right, so that's squared away. Now let's go check out x3 dot, third equation. There is no x1. x2 is multiplied by one over L1, and x3 is multiplied by negative R over L1. So zero for R1, because there's no R1, x1 components in here. x2 component, one over L1, X3 component, negative R over L1. Then let's go check out our B matrix, which is gonna be multiplied by our input. And our input was IA. IA, there you are, and there you are again. IA is multiplied by one over C in the X2 slot. So we have zero for the X1 dot. This is the X2 dot equation. So we get our one over C times IA, there you are, and there is no X3 dot component to this, so we get another zero. Moving on, our output was VL. And now let's check out our C matrix. C matrix, we're looking for our VL here. We have an X2 component and we have an X3 component. We do not have an X1 component. So zero for X1, X2 has a coefficient of one and x3 has a coefficient of negative r. So zero, one, negative r for the C matrix. And then our D matrix is gonna be a column of zeros times the same input. So this will ultimately be zero. And that's the state space of an electrical circuit, Barney style.